everyone. Welcome back to the Pathways to Happiness podcast. My name is Nina Lavon. I am a life coach that specializes in personal development and life transformation. And today we're going to be talking all about how to break the habit of constantly looking over our shoulder, waiting for the other shoe to drop, and always expecting the worst out of life. Now, this is a topic that I relate to so strongly and had such a negative impact on my life for so long. And so I'm excited to talk about it today and offer some of the strategies for overcoming these unhealthy thought patterns that help me personally, as well as what I've seen help really change the lives of other people. So as always, before we jump into the topic today, I wanted to take a moment to thank you all for your incredible support, both here and on the Nina Lavon YouTube channel. You are such an amazing audience, and so many of the topics for our shows lately have come from questions that you have sent in. So thank you so much for that. So many of these topics have been really helpful to other people, and it's all because you sent in the question. So thank you so much for that and being a part of this channel altogether. So that being said, let's go ahead and move right into our topic today, which is actually something I made a short video about a while back, but I kept getting so many more questions about it. And it's something that really just plagued me for such a huge portion of my own life that I felt it really deserved a deep dive, especially because of everything that's going on right now. Expecting the worst at all times is just a habit that so many of us have, but most of the time we have no idea that we are even thinking this way. It kind of slips underneath the radar, and that was definitely the case for me. I always thought of myself as such a positive, optimistic person, but in reality, I always had secret fears that something terrible was happening or going to happen pretty much all the time. In fact, I can think back to the parts of my life where things I did. I mean, I still have days here and there where it can happen, but I can spot it. I can fix the issue now, whereas before it could ruin my entire day or consume all my thoughts for like weeks at a time if I left it unchecked, which often happened. And this is something that I also thought was unique to me, but the reality is that it's quite to the contrary. This negative thought pattern is not only extremely common, but it is a huge contributor to anxiety and a wealth of other problems. So if this all sounds familiar, you are certainly not alone. And before we go any further, please know that Yes, this behavior is completely transformable, and there is so much relief that can be experienced at the other end of this, and it is absolutely worth putting in the inner work it takes to start to get there. And so I will be offering some of these strategies that you can use to start to do this today, and I will also share what was personally the most effective for me. So firstly, we just have to realize that it's natural to worry sometimes that something bad might happen because, let's face it, bad things happen sometimes and we are often so scared of change or of things not going as planned that we allow situations that are in no way actually threatening to fill us with panic and the possibility that they will happen are enough to just, again, keep us in that constant state of anxiety. So we are afraid of the things that could actually be bad, and we are afraid of the things that we perceive to be bad, even though there is really no concrete evidence that that would be the case. And in fact, some of these things could actually be beneficial to our lives, but usually we are closed to that possibility. So we really just have of fears stacked on fears stacked on even more fears. Part of what used to be problematic for me personally is a cognitive distortion called catastrophizing, which is just a fancy way of saying that we have a tendency to always assume that the worst case scenario is what is actually going to happen. And that can be because we either perceive our real life situation to be 
way worse than it actually is, or we could be mentally exaggerating the difficulties that we are experiencing. So someone that has the habit of catastrophizing like I did has the mentality that when it rains, it pours. We usually have the habit of making a mountain out of a molehill or we'll take one tiny thing that seems to go wrong and assume it to mean that something disproportionately horrible is going to happen. So again, if you feel like you are the only one who does this, if this rings a bell, just know that you are not alone. We are actually experts in torturing ourselves and catastrophizing is just a very popular way we tend to do this. But there are actually a ton of cognitive distortions that often come into play with this line of negative thinking. So see if any of these sound familiar. And again, I was guilty of just about all of them, so don't feel bad if they do. But one popular one is jumping to conclusions. So instead of being realistic or patient in getting all the necessary information and situations, we connect the dots in the worst possible way. So we all know that jumping to conclusions before we have all the evidence is unlikely to result in an accurate conclusion. So we will come instead to some kind of horrible determination that is likely to completely fill us with anxiety. And think about how often we do this, like all the time. We think, for example, if someone didn't call, it must be because they hate us or don't care about us or something terrible happened. But we just never allow ourselves to have any kind of rational thinking in these situations. We just have, you know, just the tiniest tidbit of information and we take it and run with it. And again, we just connect those dots in the most horrible fashion possible. So another one is something that used to be really problematic for me, and that is called mind reading. So this is when we believe that we know somehow what other people are thinking, even though there is absolutely no outward confirmation that we are right in any kind of way. So for example, we might be at a job interview and it could be just, again, really nothing happening in particular. And we just feel that we know for some reason that they don't like us. So, you know, there will be no evidence of this whatsoever, but we just feel that they don't like us. And a lot of times when people have this type of cognitive distortion, the answer is that they say that they can just tell or that they have a good sense about other people, which is usually not the case at all. Usually we are just making assumptions purely based on our own insecurities. So we are afraid that they're not going to like us at the job interview. So we engage in this kind of mind reading distortion that really confirms that for us. Another one that's popular is discounting the positive. So this is when we can completely ignore any good news or compliments or, you know, really anything positive, but then focus on every small little negative detail or mistake that we make in any situation. So of course, we are going to feel that bad things are happening in our life because we're not allowing us to ever see any upside in any given situation. So another cognitive distortion is called fortune telling. This one is also really popular. So this is when we kind of have the mentality that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So Murphy's Law. And we use this little kind of catchphrase as though it's a true universal law that allows us to be able to predict various negative outcomes for our future. So like I said, there are just so many cognitive distortions that can really genuinely alter our entire perception of the world. And sometimes we just have this general sense that bad scenarios are likely to happen to us that we are not going to have any control over 
or that we are afraid of being happy because we think that if we let ourselves be happy, that somehow that feeling is going to automatically vanish. So it's better to be cautious or skeptical or miserable or however we are actually feeling. And none of these thought patterns help us in any way, and they can actually cause a ton of unnecessary stress and a whole lot of suffering, and they do. Believe me, I am evidence of this. So above everything and anything else, we have to understand that nothing causes more pain in our lives than our own thoughts. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So sadly, we create most of our own suffering. Now, that's not to say again that bad things don't happen. They do. And there are some circumstances in life that it would be extremely difficult to argue that they are positive. And although there are some people that are actually able to do that, it's a little far-fetched for most of us. However, these circumstances are actually incredibly uncommon. They are the absolute exception to the rule because in reality, most situations are not negative or positive. They just are. The situation itself or the event is simply neutral. So it's the person experiencing the situation that makes the determination that it is good or bad. And that seems like it would be a wide generalization, but it really is true. And you can see this because you can put two people in the same exact situation and one person can perceive it to be a blessing and the other person can see it as a cause for complete despair because everything, everything is perception. Everything is mindset and everything is point of view. Think about people who witness a crime. There can be one crime and 10 different versions of the story of what happened, depending on who witnessed it and what their perception of the event actually was. And I don't mean there is one right story and nine wrong stories. There can actually be 10 real, true, correct ones because they are right, true, and correct to each person who perceived it. So we are all truly living in different realities and so much of our reality we build ourselves by our beliefs and by the way we view the actual world. So the great news is if our thoughts are not creating a reality that is happy for us, we can learn how to change our thoughts so we aren't constantly sabotaging ourselves and instead we are helping ourselves out. We are building a life that brings us joy, that lets us be at peace. So the first part of this is realizing that Thoughts are just thoughts. They don't necessarily represent truths, and they definitely don't always have our best interest in mind. Yet we tend to take pretty much everything our mind tells us really seriously. We believe it. We pay attention to it. We let these thoughts grow. I think one of the best things I was ever told is that our mind is like a garden that is completely indifferent to what we plant. So we can plant beautiful roses or we can plant weeds. It really doesn't matter. Whatever thoughts that we choose to nurture, those are the ones that are going to grow and eventually take over our entire reality. But if we realize that these are just thoughts and let them pass through without trying to study them or to cling to them, they really don't have to affect us. Every thought is not meaningful. Every thought is not important. Every thought is simply not worth our time and attention. We have to be selective. And when we aren't, there really isn't time for all the good thoughts. The bad thoughts kind of already moved in and took up all the space. So it's a really vicious cycle. And knowing that that is what is happening is really the first step in this process. And don't for a second think that your mind is broken because this is just how we are as humans. Our brains love to warn us about stuff because it thinks that it is keeping us safe. And 
just because the mind is doing the job that it's designed to do, that still doesn't mean that it's always helping us. So again, we just have to remember that we actually have the power to ignore any thought that we want to. And of course, we can create more beneficial thoughts. And that really is the key. So the biggest thing that helped me along in this journey was learning to use the technique of cognitive behavioral therapy as a form of self-therapy that helped me really learn the difference between negative automatic thoughts and irrational thinking and reality. And this takes a little patience and practice to learn. But let me assure you, this can literally change your life. It changed mine 100%. And I routinely still practice this therapy on myself all of the time. So this is something that I actually made a video about on my YouTube channel. So if you are watching this podcast through YouTube, I will link it down below. And if you are listening to the podcast, go ahead and search up cognitive behavioral therapy and my name on the YouTube channel and it will pull right up. But I'll walk you through a little bit about kind of what it involves so you get a general idea. So I like to use what's called the ABC model in cognitive behavioral therapy because I find it really easy to remember, honestly. So this is a model that was created by Dr. Albert Ellis and the name ABC really just stands for the components of the model. So each letter has something it stands for. So we can really use this model to, again, help us dispute all these really irrational thoughts and automatic thoughts that are the basis of of a lot of our negative thinking. So this is how it works. So the A stands for adversity or activating event. And this can be something that is internal or external. So we want to, when we start to experience these thoughts, we want to think about what actually caused them, what was the adversity or what was the activating event. Then for the B, which stands for beliefs, we want to think about what this event made us think. What did it make us believe? Because remember, we talked about how really no event is negative or positive. It's how we view it. It's our beliefs concerning the event. So what did this event lead us to believe? So for example, if the event was that we lost our job, did that make us believe that we weren't smart enough or we weren't capable? What did it make us believe? And again, it could be potentially irrational, but it could be rational. So you just want to think about the situation and the thoughts that it gave you. Then you want to think about the C, which is the consequences. So what are the consequences of those beliefs? Does it give you anxiety? Does it give you a low opinion of yourself? There could be, again, positive or negative consequences, but usually if we're needing to use cognitive behavioral therapy, there's some kind of perceived negative consequence that happens because of the belief that we created about this event. So from there, we can go to the D and E, which is where we actually transform these thoughts. So the D is the fun part, and the D itself stands for disputing. So this step really involves disputing these harmful beliefs. And we can do this through really mindfully questioning and examining and challenging them. So we need to notice these beliefs in our stream of consciousness, and then we need to look at them carefully. So we can start to ask ourselves to provide evidence for these things to be true. And we can ask ourselves questions to see if these beliefs are really in line with reality. We want to ask ourselves if these thoughts are generally detrimental to ourselves or are actually helpful. Are they reasonable and logical? Do they help us foster healthy or positive relationships? Do they support the achievement of our interests or our goals? Are these thoughts 
thoughts that we would choose to have. And remember, we have to keep in mind that we can choose to have thoughts over other thoughts. So these are the types of questions that we want to ask ourselves during this disputing phase of the process. And after we've done that, we can get to the E, which is for effect. And this is where we kind of acknowledge the positive consequences that can happen from changing these beliefs and examine effective new philosophies, thought patterns, and behavior. So we can begin to give ourselves replacement thoughts that are much more realistic, much more positive, and ones that specifically do not cause us to suffer. And if we can learn to do this, I assure you again that our lives are forever changed because this process allows us to never be a victim of our thoughts. And we can do this on our own, which is what I personally do, but we can also, if needed, do this with a therapist who can train you even more thoroughly on how you can do this at home even when you aren't in a session with your therapist. So either way, this is you know the number one thing that I recommend for anyone that ever suffers from negative thinking or catastrophic thinking because this process is just so effective and is also part of the therapy that is used to treat even mental illnesses a lot of the time. So it is something that is definitely clinically proven to work for many, many people. So that is my biggest suggestion, but there's also other things that we can do. And one of the things sounds silly, but it is talking to yourself. And that's something that I also do all the time. So when we notice that we have these thoughts, we can literally talk to ourselves and say, okay, I've already had this thought. I am now wasting my time. Or you could say something like, this is just a thought. This is not reality. I have the choice whether or not to listen to this. And you can really kind of parent to yourself in this way. And sometimes it really is helpful to hear your own voice say it. So literally, I tell my own self, okay, already done this. I already thought this. You thought this like 10 times already. So we can move on to another thought. This is not helpful to me. This is not making my life better. This is actually detrimental if I continue to think in this way. So you can learn to talk to yourself in that way as well. Another technique, and again, I say this in so many podcasts and so many videos, and that is because it's so helpful, and that is to practice mindfulness. And of course, mindfulness is simply the practice of being in the here and now, living truly in the present moment, as opposed to constantly letting your mind wander to the past or the unknown you know, things that could happen in the future, which again, we generally will try to catastrophize if given the chance to do so. So just learning to be present in this moment and to experience the moment that we're having now fully is so helpful because we can realize that nothing terrible is usually happening in the present moment. It's, you know, really coming from suffering, thinking about the past and the future that really causes the anxiety to set in. So if we can learn to practice mindfulness, that's something else that is so genuinely helpful. Another strategy that can really help with this negative type thinking is to become more self-aware and that really comes through introspection. So we can really see our own patterns of behaviors. We can see what things tend to trigger us to, to have this type of thinking. Are there certain events or certain people that make us feel uncomfortable? And these are the things that once we have an awareness of, you know, we can start the healing process in. But if we don't have that self-awareness, we can constantly get triggered by things that you know, are bothersome to us and probably are things that need to be addressed because if they are things that constantly cause us anxiety, these are things that we need to really dissect and figure out why because oftentimes when we can figure out why, that's when we can start that actual healing process.
Another thing that we can do is just be so active with stress reduction. So we all know that stress is a huge part of modern day life. A lot of times there are, you know, stressful things that happen that we can't control. There are some stressful things, chronic stress, a lot of it we can do things about, and I have an upcoming video about that. So I will be posting that one as soon as possible. But dealing with the stress that we already have is also extremely important because when we are under a lot of stress, it just greatly increases the chances of us engaging in these negative thought patterns because we're not feeling well. We are overwhelmed. We are not our best self. So if we can do things that we know personally reduce stress for us, these are things that we have to engage in on a regular basis, not just every once in a while. If you know, for example, that meditation is helpful to you, that's something that you really need to be doing every day or if journaling is something that helps reduce stress engage in journaling if you need to spend time with your pets or if you need to go out with you know some friends you know whatever it is for you but engage in the things that you know definitely reduce stress for you because again that is really going to help keep your life in balance if you get too stressed out things get all out of whack and that's when we really start to have thoughts that are just out of control Another technique that I have brought up on a few occasions as well is scheduling worry time this is something that is effective for me. So if I notice that I am ruminating over something, you know, and I really can't get past it, or if I am just really engaging in these negative thoughts or have created some kind of crazy negative story for myself, I tell myself that I'm not going to think about this right now, but I am going to allow myself 15 minutes at a specific time to worry about whatever I want. And it's so effective because, you know, a lot of our worry and our anxiety comes from feeling that our life is out of control. And by scheduling worry time, you are controlling something. You are controlling the time that you are going to allow yourself to have these thoughts. And oftentimes, believe it or not, when we do this, when the time comes up to worry, when we have scheduled this worry time, we really don't even take the amount of time that it needs or we're not really, you know, stressed out or worried at that time. So it is something that can be helpful because we allow ourselves kind of a buffer. We can get distracted by other things. So, you know, these negative thought patterns don't seem to emerge as often. But again, if they are still there when it's time to worry, knock yourself out. Let yourself worry. It's contained. There is an amount of time that you are allowing this to happen, and then you are going to control the time when it stops. Another thing that is important to do and is really helpful is to simply remind yourself that you really can cope with anything that comes in your path. And remember that 85% of what we worry about never actually happens, never even happens at all. And the 15% that <laughs> does actually happen is something that usually we can handle with so much more grace and ease than we ever thought was possible. So we get through the 15% that actually does come into fruition. And we have proven this to ourselves every single time. So give yourself a round of applause for getting to the point where you are now because you have overcome literally everything that has ever come in your path. And there's no reason at all to believe that that is not going to be the case for the rest of your life. So it's something that we have to remind ourselves of because a lot of times we simply don't give ourselves credit for all the things that we have gone, gone through. Life can be painful, especially considering the amount of suffering we put on our own selves. So the amount of suffering that we have probably experienced in our life is immense. And we have gotten through the other scenarios that are actually truly deserving of 
negative feelings and negative emotions. And we've gotten through all those things as well. So give yourself a round of applause. You are a strong person and you will continue to be a strong person. And believe it or not, you will continue to get stronger as a person. And of course, we have to remember always to practice great self-care and, you know, even just the basics of sleeping enough getting exercise, which is a part of self-care, whether you like it or not, you should be exercising because it has so many positive benefits for both our physical and mental health. And our diet, you know, what we put into our body definitely affects our humanly experience. We also have to think about what we are consuming mentally if we are spending too much time on social media or if we're watching a lot of negative news. We need to really limit our consumption of these things because they do negatively affect our lives a lot of the time. So self-care is huge and also, you know, engaging in those pleasant, happy things are also part of self-care. So taking that bubble bath, reading that book, going to see that movie when we're able to, that we really want to see. So treating ourselves and also taking care of all the essential parts really of our mental and physical health. And Lastly, you know, happy distractions and hobbies that bring joy and create balance in our life are also much more important than we give a credit for a lot of times. We need to be having fun. We need to be enjoying life. And our thinking often becomes much more positive when we are mentally in a better place. So we, mean, we need to make sure that we are allowing ourselves opportunities to do things that are positive. And that kind of takes the edge off a lot of these negative thought patterns. And remember, if you feel that this is an issue you simply can't handle on your own, you can always seek the help of a mental health professional that can certainly help you start to feel a lot better. So also remember that if our thoughts are creating the majority of our reality, it's definitely in our best interest to start acknowledging and addressing these negative thought patterns so we aren't constantly expecting the worst all the time. So as always, I am anxious to hear your thoughts on this and your comments always generate great conversation and many times also really help our other listeners. So please don't hesitate to share your own story if you're comfortable doing so. And I truly hope that these techniques will pull you out of the habit of constantly waiting for that other shoe to drop. And remember, no matter how many shoes actually do drop, you'll be able to handle it. So why make life more miserable than it needs to be? We are the only ones with the power to make our lives extraordinary. And it is my true hope that these strategies get you one step closer to that if you aren't there already. So please know that it is never, ever, ever, ever too late to change your life. And it's never too late to become a better version of yourself and a version of yourself that not only allows you to feel happiness and peace in your life, but allows you to truly live the life that you choose to lead. And so often, really, it is purely our thoughts that keep us from doing so. So I also want to remind you that next week we are recording our next questions and answers podcast. So please go ahead and get those questions to me. If you have not done so already, you can reach me by email at nina.lavon at gmail.com. And that is spelled N-E-N-A dot L-A-V-O-N-N-E at gmail. And you can also reach me on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at Nina Lavon. So as always, it has been an absolute pleasure talking with you guys, and I greatly look forward to the next time. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, and I will see you soon. Take care, guys.